If you're a realtor that needs business right now, but you don't have any money, then this video is going to be the best use of your time today. What we're doing is we're bringing on one of my business partners, Slater, who's been able to get a listing per week and put over $5 million under contract this quarter, quadrupling his production in 2022 by leveraging this FISBO or for sale by owner cold calling strategy. And the best part is, it's entirely free. It is unbelievable how valuable this video is if you stay through to the end because Slater breaks down his exact script, how he targets the for sale by owners, and in insane detail, exactly what he does and says in order to get into their home, even if they say they don't wanna even speak to a realtor, and how to actually convert that into a listing every single week. It is insane when he breaks down his follow-up strategy and everything he does in order to lead with value you and I'm honestly shocked that he just gave us the entire blueprint for free on this video so before I bring on Slater I want to mention that two things number one I'm gonna link all of Slater's contact information below as well as his social media profiles because he puts out a ton of incredible sales tips on objections and things like that and then also there's gonna be a link where you can book a meeting with him to talk about partnering with him because he's not only done this for himself but he's now helping all of the agents that have partnered with him do this as well getting a listing every single week so without further ado let's bring on Slater and talk about the best FISBO strategy in order to start crushing it and quadruple your business in the next year what's going on guys welcome back to another video and today we've got on a super special guest and I'm really excited about this one because as you likely know my channel is really focused on social media and kind of the modern way of doing things. But we've got a number of people in our group that are absolutely crushing it the traditional way, which is really important, especially now as we're heading into a shifting market. There's a lot of agents that don't have a lot of money. And there's agents that are looking for free ways to get in front of people every single day. And that's what we're going to be diving into today. So super excited to bring on my business partner, Slater Shreve here from Seattle Market. Um, and we're going to be diving into how he's been absolutely crushing it as a newer agent. Uh, uh, leveraging cold calling and some really innovative stuff. So Slater, what's going on, man? How's it going, man? Thanks for having me on the on your on your channel. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited about this. You know, I've been seeing you, you know, blow it up and you've been crushing with production. So before we kind of get into the tactical of what you've done with Fizbos and cold calling and all of this good stuff, why don't you just give people a brief rundown as to who you are and, and what kind of got you into this position as being a realtor and then, you know, uh, you know, to where you are right now in, in real estate. Yeah, so uh, I, I got my license a couple years ago. Um, I was at a, I, I've been at a couple different brokerages. Was at uh, Keller Williams for for about a year, uh, then Compass for for another year, and then I finally switched over to EXP uh, with the Batista Twins um, earlier this year. And really, um, what what got me into this position where I am now is is I kind of made the switch from like pitching the brokerage that I'm at, like, hey, I'm at Compass isn't that cool? And, and the sellers just weren't, they weren't like biting. Um, and then I made the switch to pitching my own brand, which is Slater Group. And now, you know, I've listed um, 5 million this quarter alone. And no one even asked me well, what brokerage I'm with, because I'm just always pitching Slater Group. So uh, along with the cold calling for sale by owners, it's really been just pitching what I have to offer and kind of just focusing in on, 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 on that. That's super cool, man. Yeah, I know that you've like quadrupled your production this year and it's yeah. been just insane to see the momentum you've been building. So, you know, before we kind of get into the tactical side of cold calling, what made you actually decide to take that avenue? Because, you know, as a new agent, you can cold call, you can door knock, you can leverage social. And, and I know that you've done it all, but what specifically kind of drew you to the calling aspect of it? Yeah, so I've always liked um, just going, you know, being a go getter, being aggressive, just kind of, I love talking. And so I've actually been cold calling since even before I was licensed. I was, um, I was an ISA for a company uh, before I was licensed. And I, uh, within my first couple months, I became the number one ISA in the company. And so I've always kind of had uh, a knack at it. But over the last few years, uh, I've definitely been honing my skill. And I like cold calling because one, it I think it's one of the only ways to get business in real estate without having to wait for business. Like there's so many ways to have business, you know, come to you like social media or open houses or referrals. And those are all great ways, but I love going after the business. And I think cold calling is one of the best ways to do that. 
I think that's a, a awesome, man, because again, that's one of the things that I see with agents that maybe aren't doing as many deals as they would like is that, you know, they're whenever you look at what they're actually doing, they're not doing anything, any of the things that will get you now business. A lot of yeah. people are kind of chasing like the sexy, shiny penny. They just want to put out content or they just want to run ads and they don't want to put in like the trench work and, and the yeah. proactive work to actually control. And that's the cool part is like, with cold calling and I did door knocking, you can control the fact that you get in front of new people every single day. Yeah. Um, so that's, it's nice that you kind of have taken that approach to say, I'm going to put my business in my own hands and I'm going to make sure that I'm taking this aggressive approach where I'm going to put no excuses as to why I, whether I do or don't have business. So, right. you know, starting to lean into your cold calling strategy, I know that you kind of mentioned FISBO. So why don't you kind of lead people down the, you know, down the journey of how you approach cold calling, who you specifically target and what that kind of looks like for you? Yeah. So I cold call when I cold call, it's just for a few hours every day. I'm not working eight hours a day. Uh, I cold call from eight to 11 and then I'll, I'll, I'll uh, work on my CRM and I'll do everything from like 11 to noon or around there. So just a few hours a day, but if you do it every day, that, you know, that, like you said, that trench work can really set you up for success. The reason that I do for sale by owners is I think it's the, the hottest lead in our industry. It's the only lead in our industry lead type that A, they want to sell and they want to sell now. Um, and B, they don't have an agent. So, yep. you know, expired leads, if you go like a few months back, they might have decided to keep the house or whatever, whatever happened with them. But for sale by owners, they want to sell now. They don't have an agent. They haven't had luck selling on their own. They have an idea of the price range and they're usually pretty motivated. So to me, and it's free. And so to me, it's like the holy grail of, of real estate leads. Yeah, hundred percent. And and I think it's cool that, you know, you've been able to develop the skill in FISBOs because, you know, for sale by owners are going to start to become even more relevant than ever, because as we're starting to see the market shift, you know, a lot of people, a lot of these FISBOs are going to struggle now to sell their home. Whereas previously, you know, in the last two years when the market was hotter than hell, yeah. you could almost get away in certain situations as being mm -hmm. a FISBO because you could list it and, you know, anybody yeah. wanted to buy. But now those FISBOs are really going to start to feel the pressure. And so taking your approach is going to be really cool. So let's kind of dive into that. What is your approach with FISBOs and how do you go about finding them? And then what do you kind of say, you know, in, in terms yeah. of your script? How do you approach that? So what I do is I just go on Zillow because uh, that's really where like all the FISBOs are. The, uh, Zillow is partnered there or they have their own website like FISBO for owners or FISBOonline.com. But you just go to Zillow.com and then you just, uh, hit, you know, you go for sale uh, by owner. You can type in your price minimum if you want a $400,000 minimum. You can pick your counties, um, whatever it is. You can go across the whole state if you'd like. Um, and then basically I just go down the list um, with, with the, starting with the new ones first. And then if I talk to them, I'll heart it. And, um, and um, you know, I'll put them in my CRM if it was a, if it was a good conversation, if I'll put them in my CRM only if a, they are willing to work with me in the future. Um, and, and if it's a good conversation and they're willing to work with me, but basically what I do is I use the Socratic method, uh, which is basically, selling through questions. So, you know, FISBOs, they usually think that like they know it all. That's why they're doing for sale by owner. Yeah. So it doesn't usually work if you just tell them and tell them this, they're going to reject it. So you kind of have to ask them certain questions that will lead them into, uh, into working with you. And basically what I usually like to do is I do a two-step uh, appointment process. So I don't ask for the listing right off right off the bat because uh, they usually you know they usually won't give it to you if, if they'll usually say hey I have an agent if I do want to use an agent which I don't I have an agent and so you don't want to get that that uh, that initial resistance I just say hey um, you know I want to take a look at I'm taking a look at some homes in the market well first I actually tell them hey I think it's a good idea that you're selling home on your own so that's kind of like a pattern interrupt they immediately yeah. like me off the bat. And I don't have any resistance. And I say, but if, you know, for whatever reason, um, you know, 30 days down the road or, or, or what have you, you're not able to sell the home, you know, for whatever reason, and I'm sure you can sell it on your own. Would you at least, you know, see, uh, would you at least be open to, to, to having me come by and showing you some other options? And they go, yeah, in 30 days, sure, no problem. That's after I get their motivational questions. Where are they? Why are they looking to sell? Where are they looking to move? What's their timeline for movement? And then I'll say that, and they say, "Yeah." And in 30 days, that's no problem. Then I'll kind of say, "Okay, 
okay, great. Hey, and by the way, I want to take it some a look at some homes in your neighborhood. I preview homes all day. Um, can I take a look at yours? Uh, and you know, and, and I promise not to ask for the business while I'm there. So that's an easy way to kind of get a preview appointment. And then I have a whole script, the whole system for the preview appointment that perfectly leads into the listing appointment, which is a few days later. And this is like, and I have a whole follow-up system that works like a, a perfectly old machine and and I have you know they love it and it's what it's allowed me just this quarter to list over five million for sale by owners just closed on a couple last week and so yeah that's crazy man and you know yeah. why don't are you able to give us a bit of a preview of like you know what that looks like in terms of you know you're in the home and then how do you get that appointment and then mm -hmm. we can kind of dive into some of the follow-up strategies yeah so what I'll say is hey you know to close the to close the preview appointment, they say, "Yeah, sure, you can take a look at the home." I say, "Okay, great." Um, you know, do do wins do do weekends or weekdays work better for you? Okay, weekdays. Do afternoons or evenings work better for you? Okay, great. Uh, so, so evenings and weekdays. Uh, are you free Tuesday at uh, five, or does Wednesday at seven work better for you? you give them a choice close, and then you know, once once I get uh once I get their uh, a, a confirmed time. I'll send them a calendar invite, Mike, because most yeah. realtors are never sending calendar invites. You know, you send me a calendar invite for this meeting, which is very professional, and most people just aren't doing that. And it not only shows a professionalism off the bat, but it also actually keeps them, uh, you know, it reminds them of it. Um, then what I'll do is I'll send them a backup plan, and it's an HTML5 PDF, like a flip book. And it's like a 10-page flip book of everything I offer, of testimonials, of the listing process. Uh, and 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 it's branded uh, to Slater Group, and I send it to them as a flip book, and they love it. So I send that right after the appointment to their email, and that's how I get their email, Mike. Because I don't yeah. say, can I, can I email you some more info? They're going to say no every time. I'll say, um, you know, and what I can do in the meantime, and, and and until we meet, and I really don't mind, I'll go ahead and send you over a for sale by owner backup plan. Go and take a look at it, and if you'd like to review that at a later time, we can. Does that sound fair enough? Hundred percent of the time, they always say that's fair enough. So I send it to them. I send them the calendar invite. Then once, uh, then I'll actually set them up on an MLS, um, an MLS update for their neighborhood that goes out to them every Wednesday morning. And then um, once, so that's that's the first step of of the preview appointment. And already, you know, they're getting a calendar invite. They're getting a backup plan. They're getting uh, some MLS updates. They're getting all these things and most agents aren't doing this. I'll send them a video text, a contact card with my website, all these things that no one else is doing, a thank you card handwritten immediately. So already I've wowed them and I haven't gone to the preview point, right? Yeah. Then once we get to the preview appointment, I build rapport over the, uh, over the tour. And then at the end of the tour, right as I'm about to head out, I say, hey, thanks so much. Good luck on selling it on your own. Hey, by the way, I took some notes about the property and about the neighborhood before I came. I did a little bit of research. Do you mind if I share those with you now? Uh, and they go, yeah, sure. And so then I'll take a seat at the kitchen table. And what I do, Mike, is I print out their Zillow ad and I make some notes on it. And they love this because no one else is doing this. Uh, I'll make some notes on the Zillow ad and I'll print out some recent sales of mine in the neighborhood. Um, but really, I'm not focusing on my sales. That's just fun to kind of have. Um, what I'll do is I'll print out a, a market report, a market snapshot, which so the, the two, the main point of how I know if it was a good preview appointment is I print out um, the average days on market in their neighborhood um, and then the average showings to pending in their neighborhood. So I'll say, so Mike, you've been on the market for about five days now. The average time on your market um, in your neighborhood is about 12 days. And in those 12 days, um, it takes about 20 showings to get a, a good offer. So in those five days, how many, you know, you should have about half a dozen showings. How many showings have you had? They'll usually say just one or two. Okay, no problem. Well, hey, let's do this. If in the next five days where you should have 20 showings by then, if you don't have at least another half a dozen showings, would you be willing to have me over at that time to show you what I can do to, think, to get you those showings? right off the bat, you're offering value without trying to add any pressure to them. So they say, sure, yeah, that sounds good. Then I'll say, okay, great. In the meantime, I'll send you a packet. It's another flip book of how to sell your home on your own in the meantime. And I wish you the best of luck. Um, and I'll tell some buyers that I have about your home. 
So already they love me. I haven't tried to close them. I build rapport with them. I've offered tons of value. I've showed professionalism. I've showed my follow-up. And that over the next few days, they can talk to their spouse about me. Hey, we didn't realize that uh, it, it takes 20 showings. Homes are selling in a week. We didn't realize how many homes are in the market, uh, just like mine, that are competing. And kind of gives them some time to warm up to me. Then I'll usually close them. Then um, the, either I'll close them on a next appointment there, or I'll just just call them. And um, if I built enough rapport a, a few days later, I'm, I'm sending them texts every Friday. I'm calling them every Monday um, to go over the market report over MLS that I send them. Then on the on the actual, so, so, so that's the preview appointment and that's, you know, already there, they love me. Yeah. Then on the listing appointment, what I'll do is um, I have a whole, like I have a slideshow on my laptop that I'll bring, I'll bring all my prior sales uh, in the neighborhood. I make a website uh, for each property with uh, a beautiful video, beautiful photos from our media company, custom website built for properties, a custom URL just for the home. I'll show them all the active listings that I have. I'll show them my website. Uh, so they're, you know, it's super impressive. They they want a, a website like this. It costs thousands of dollars for my media team to do this. The staging is that another thousands of dollars. So, you know, all of this already, they don't usually don't want to spend, you know, 5K plus plus. And I'm, I'm showing them how much it costs showing them how much, you know, we're, we're, we're selling these homes usually for over ask. Um, and then basically if, if they have any resistance, you know, I'll use the straight line, the, the straight line system. Okay. Which, which part of this, you know, Hey, we want to talk to our spouse. Thanks for coming over. Okay, great. No problem. Which part about this did you want to talk to your spouse about, you know, Oh, it, 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 oh, it's the price. Okay, great. So here's the pricing models. Which part of the, or which model did you have questions about? Oh, is this, and I'll answer their questions. And then, okay, did I answer your question? You go right back to the beginning and you close them again. And you really, any objections they have, you just weed it out. I have all of the agents that I'm working with that we're getting one listing appointment a week. I'm coaching them on exactly on how to weed out all these objections. Because you can get as many appointments as you like, Mike. But if you're not closing the listing appointments effectively, you're just running through leads and you're and you're just spinning your wheels. So it's important to know exactly how to close them, how to close their objections. They have a million objections, but really, it's usually they just don't trust you or you haven't asked enough questions. So we, I'm coaching all my agents on exactly how to how to weed those out and and how to close them. That's super cool. And, and, you know, just to kind of go over that, you know, a lot of what you talked about there, like, you know, it's really nice that you obviously take this very value driven approach where you're just mm -hmm. giving and giving and giving. And I think even just like, you know, obviously it's clear that you understand sales because, you know, going back to like your, uh, your kind of the, the offerings that you provide ahead of the pre-listing appointment is, you know, when you ask, is that fair? And that's yeah, a really yeah. cool thing because like, yeah. it, it's such a, an easy way to drop people's guard because when you ask, instead of going for the give, the answer is always going to be no, but very rarely does somebody ever say that's not fair to that's give me fair. something. You, you know, know, I say that I, I, I call fair the F word in sales. Uh, yeah. Fair is the F word because it's the easiest word. If I ask you if something's fair, your brain is going to be like, well, hey, I mean, that's fair. And so, yeah, that's fair. Okay, great. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the easiest way to close somebody. I mean, you can use it for, for I mean, for anything, but especially something like, you know, I'll send you this value to your email. Does that sound fair enough? Sure, it sounds. So yeah, you're right. That's that fair is totally the F word. And, and I, I love using it as much as I can. Yeah, it's, and it's really cool that you, you know, you've got also a very data driven approach. And I think that's yeah. one of the things that not a lot of agents take note of is like, you're showing up to these hyper prepared. And when you can pull mm -hmm. the data, that's, you know, a lot of people try and approach these in a very emotional way, um, yeah. where they're just like making assumptions about why they're going to be so great. But when you can give data as to, hey, this is how well, you should be performing. How are you performing? And the answer is never going to be that good. Now you can start to look logically at the situation and, and it gives them some actual, you know, tangible context as to the performance and the yeah. expectations versus just, hey, I'm going to be the best person for the job. Uh, here's why I should work. 
Yeah. Yeah. And everyone says they're going to be the best. And so, you know, obviously, you know, I have confidence that I am the best for them, but that, you know, I'm not just saying I'm the best because every agent that just got their license who, you know, have, is taught to have confidence is going to say that. And, you know, um, it, when I'm on the phone with them, you have to also identify their personality types, right? So yeah. it's, you know, if they're just talking and talking like a lot of moms or, or they just like to talk, right? Like yeah. maybe their son moved out and I remind them of their son. So they're just talking with me on the phone. And so if that's how they are, when I show up, I'm just going to talk and talk and talk. And that's how I get them to like me. And that's how I get them to remember me. And some other guys, if they're like a CEO or if they're like an engineer, they usually are short to the point and they're data driven. So that's all I'll be with them. So you have to identify their personality type and just kind of be like that because you work with people that you like and you trust and and you like people that are like you so you have to kind of be that be that character for them yeah definitely you know understanding how to mirror and kind of sense your equity is so important because you know if you're coming a lot of people kind of uh, maybe you're energetic by nature and then if you mm -hmm. come across somebody that's more kind of introverted you're going to overwhelm them if you can't yeah. kind of match their energy levels so i'd love that you know that um and mm -hmm. that you obviously applied at the highest level so when you're calling these people do you use like a certain call system or do you just use your phone like a 1v1 call or a dialer yeah. what's kind of your systems that you so use? When I first started as an ISA, I was using, I was dialing like 200 dials a day on, on an auto dialer system. Uh, and that was expired leads and those go way back. But right now I'm just, just focused on for sale by owners. So it's on Zillow and I'll just do it by hand and I'll just do like a couple dozen a day. Um, and, and I'll just do it that way. There's a lot out right now. And, and I mean, you know, I, usually I try to get the new ones, um, but I'll, I'll also do the ones that I haven't contacted yet. But yeah, I'm just doing it by hand right now. Of course, that's awesome. And, yeah. you know, kind of as we're bringing this full circle, are there any kind of common objections that you kind of face and and how you usually handle those when you're dealing with FISBO, something that you maybe yeah. frequently hear on an ongoing basis that's pretty consistent? Yeah, well, the most common is, A, I don't need an agent. Um, I, this, the, the home will sell itself. Um, okay. And then, and you can never disagree with them. I mean, if someone's, if someone who calls me, I don't, if someone calls me, I didn't ask for their call and they start disagreeing with me, I'm just going to hang out. Like, I, I, I don't know who you are. You're not like my friends, right? Yeah. <laughs> you just call me and start arguing with me. I'm just going to hang up. So, and then, um, and also they're trying to make the best decision for their family. If, if they have a family, they're not doing this to spite their family, right? They're doing it because they think it's it's best. They're, they want to save. Yeah. Um, and, um, and then the other objection is, but if I did list, I have friends in the industry. And so those are the two most common. And for, if they say, I don't need an agent, you say, Hey, uh, that makes sense. I think you can sell that on your own, but you just told me that you want to get to San Diego, um, by, you know, in a, in a couple months, you know, the, the closing process is about 30 days. You know, you've already been on for a couple of weeks. If you can't sell it in the next couple of weeks, would you be open to seeing what other options are out there? You know, what, what would you, would you consider, you know, seeing what other options are out there and non non-committal words, like, would you consider, um, yeah. you know, possibly, would you consider potentially seeing what other options are out there? Just, you know, just pepper in with a lot of non-committal words like that. And, and then is that fair enough? Right. As many as you can do. Yeah. Okay. And, um, then the other one I have friends in the industry, usually if I have good rapport, I'll just say, Hey, there are more agents right now in the country than there are homes. So if you didn't have, uh, friends in the industry, I'd, I'd probably say you have no friends. You know, just make them laugh something like that. And then, and, and, you know, but if what I'm doing is a night and day, usually sometimes I'll go on aggressive. Like if what I'm doing is a night and day different than your, than your other agent, I don't expect you to shift gears, so, you know, something like that. And other times I'll just say, Hey, I'm not, I'm not even, you know, trying to get your business. I just, I want to see, you know, I, I just want to see, see if I can help you. Um, take a look at the home. It's even something, even something I, I can sell because I don't know if it's something I can sell. Um, but, you know, and if what I'm doing, if you like what I'm doing, feel free to take it to your other agent and say, hey, this is what he's doing. Why aren't you doing this? Um, you know, just things like that. Of course. I think that's awesome, man. And and yeah. clearly, if, you know, you've been around the block with this and you've got it pretty dialed in, which is which is really cool. And, and yeah. you know, that comes through repetitions and building up that skill set. And I think that kind of leads into one of our last questions here, which is, you know, what is your recommendation for people that are looking to get started? Because one of the things that I always found, because I door knocked in the beginning and I cold called is that people now come out, you know, come out of a call like this, they're fired up, they've got the scripts, they've got the plan. Yeah. 
but they're like the phone feels like it weighs a million pounds. Like they're scared to pick it up and sure. they've got this fear of, you know, getting rejected or, you know, people yelling at them and hanging up on them. Like, you know, yeah. what is your recommendation for people that are fearful of, of actually calling? Well, people could hang up on you, but I mean, what's the, I mean, I've been hung up on all the time, but that, that's yeah. the worst that can happen. Like you're not at their door. The, the literally worst thing that can happen is they're, they're going to hang up on you. Yeah. Right. That's like, that's the, like the worst case is they hang up on you. Um, but if you kind of track your metrics, like the people that I'm, so first of all, my two pieces of advice is you should probably use a script. The script that I've designed is getting the agents I'm coaching one listing a week. Uh, but it's not just the script because, you know, there are in Hollywood, there are bad actors that read good scripts and it just doesn't, the movie doesn't work. So it's not just about the script. It's about how you deliver it. And it's important to, you know, that you're coached in a way from someone who understands NLP and sales and, 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 and how to do that. But the second thing after a script is just pick up the phone. Because if you think about it, if you're getting one list appointment a week, and you're closing maybe half of them when you first start, or you're getting two listing appointments a week and you're closing half of them, and they're you know five hundred thousand dollar homes at three percent, and you and you're doing you know three hours a day. If you do the math, it basically works out to about a thousand dollars an hour. So if you if you just tell yourself, well, hey, it might be hard, but if I just pick up the phone, I'll earn a thousand dollars an hour. I mean, I don't know any other job. I mean, even the highest attorneys don't make, don't make that much. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, when you think about it that way, like, Hey, I might have to eat shit on the phone when I start, but it's a thousand dollars an hour. I think that's a good way to think about it. It's, it's an awesome way to think about it. And I did the yeah. same when I was cold calling is and door knocking. I'm like, every single door is going to be like, you know, I equated it to like $50 whenever I was knocking doors based on the commission I was doing. I'm like, every yeah. door is 50 bucks. Like when you average yeah. it out. And, you know, I, I think again, as, as obvious as it sounds in terms of saying, just pick up the phone, there's, yeah. there's a lot of inherent value in there because a lot of people, you know, there, there's a quote out there that says, um, you know, it's, it's not the things that are difficult that you that you do not try it's that because you do not try things are difficult yeah. and it's one of these things where you know you're never going to be good at developing a skill until you actually consistently try it's like i tell people all the time you know when you were learning to ride a bicycle did you just get on the bike and you go and you're just going full tilt down the street no problem no you like yeah. you try and try and fall and fall and then you right. become good and then it becomes second nature like it obviously is to you because you've got the repetitions in to the point where now you know you're a master at it, but yeah. you can only get better at something if you actually just start you, taking You action. actually do it. I mean, you can watch all the YouTube videos on riding a bike, yeah. but you're not going to, you have to actually ride the bike, right? You can watch all the fitness videos on YouTube in the world and yeah. you're not going to grow any muscles, right? So you have, to, you have to actually get in there. It's called, you're just talking to people who want to sell their homes. I mean, it's, it, it couldn't be easy. It couldn't be like a make more sense. Like I'm going to call somebody who has raised their hand and said, I want to sell my home right now. And I'm having trouble selling it on my own. And you're calling them. You're not, it's not really cold calling. I'm not calling like a neighborhood to ask if they want to sell. It's, it's warm calling. I'm calling hot leads that want to sell their home right now in this market. So really, if you come, if you realize that you have value, uh, if, if you come from a place of value instead of just yeah. like, hey, I want your commission, if you actually have value and you have confidence that you have value, calling them is actually a favor. So, you, yeah. you know, they're not able to sell their home. Like, the 100%. only person do it is with an agent like you, you know? Yeah. So you're calling to help them and and they'll they'll see that if you know how to deliver that. So that's Thanks, the mindset man. you have to come from. Yeah. And, and I think that's, you know, kind of segueing into the final thing here, but, you know, just to kind of uh, piggyback onto that and add some extra depth to it, like that's one of the reasons why, you know, I did really well with door knocking is because I went in and a lot of people struggle because they feel like if they're calling or they're knocking that they feel like they're soliciting. But the way that I kind of got outside of that fear is say, I'm fully convinced that if they are looking to buy or sell that I'm going to go above and beyond. So like you're alluding to, I will be doing them a favor. I'm helping. And when you go in with this mentality of I'm actually doing them something of value versus, hey, yeah. I'm annoying them, whatever you focus on expands. And if you think you're going to come across as solicitational and that you're soliciting, you are. But if you genuinely believe that you're doing them a good service by being there or by calling them and that you're helping, then that's how it's going to come across. And yeah. You know, even with you just talking about taking action, I think it's the best piece of advice because I see people all the time that 
practice scripts for days, for hours, every single day, mm -hmm. but you will never be able to apply that script in, in terms of, you know, actually executing and converting until you do it in person, because yeah. once you start doing it on the battlefield, in reality, there's going to be an objection you've never heard before. And yeah. it's going to stump you, you off in the middle of a sentence. Exactly. Your tongue yeah. is going to get twisted, you know, until you actually execute this in practice, you could rehearse it a billion different times. You'll yeah. never be able to get good until you actually start putting it into re real life situations. Yeah, well, it's like Mike Tyson, you know, everyone has a plan to like get punched in the face. And if yeah. you perfectly practice your script, and then someone's like, sorry, I just, I'm just, you know, I, I don't want an agent. And you never be like, oh, I haven't practiced for this. I thought you were going to let me go yeah. at the end. And then it was going to be an easy close. Right. So you need to know objection handling is the number one skill when it comes to, to cold calling. And, you know, you, you can even take it a step further uh, with that, that, that mindset of coming from value. When you actually ask them why they're looking to sell, oh, my grandma is in California and she's not doing well. We don't know how long she has. Okay, so their home's not going to sell on their own. So it might, if you don't call them, they're not going to be able to say goodbye to their grandma. You can think about it like you could really take yeah. it that far in your head and really be like, wow. I'm really, by calling them, I'm going to change their lives. Like it really, that's a truth, you know? Yeah. So that, that mindset is like, I'm helping it. I'm changing their life by calling them. That can really give you the permission that you might need in your head just to pick up the phone. And even on the listing appointment, be aggressive by closing them. Hey, if I, you can think in your head, Hey, if I don't close you, you're not going to be able to go to your, to see your family because your home's not going to sell. And you're going to try and try, and it's going to be four weeks and a home's not going to sell. And who knows what, who knows what happens, you know? So it, you could really think of it like they need me, like, you know, that's an easy mindset hack. hundred percent. And, and, you know, I think it's just incredible to see that, you know, you've really got this dialed in and, and, you know, it's been amazing to watch your success with this and, and that you clearly understand sales at the highest level, but also that you've been able to help other people do this because a lot of people start to find these strategies and it work for themselves, but they're not able to translate that to others like you are. And now, you know, people that are partnering with you are crushing it. So, yeah. you know, obviously you and I are partners and, and I'd love for you to kind of give people just an idea as to why you decided to join EXP and specifically our group um, and what it's like to maybe partner with you as well. Yeah, well, I partnered with EXP, Mike, because, you know, I want to build my own, my own brand, my own team, my own group. I, I saw what you got. I saw what you, me and the Batista twins, saw what you're doing on social media. You're killing it on YouTube. You're killing it everywhere. And we wanted to be partnered with a, with a powerhouse like yourself. So that's why, you know, we, we, we joined EXP. Now you've broken every record in the company. And so we're really thankful to be partnered with someone like you. Um, and what, you know, what... I love coaching. Like I love coaching more than I love selling real estate. And so I've always just, even when I was at Keller Williams years ago, I was uh, like writing scripts and I was coaching them on how to cold call after I first, after I first got my license, because I've already been doing it for a couple of years. So coaching is just something in my blood. My mom is a Harvard professor, she, you know, I, I, teaching and coaching is just something that I love to do. So the people uh, that I'm working with, they're getting and the whole, they get the whole follow-up system it's not just objection handlers they get the whole system of what to send the backup plans the, everything what to write in the thank you cards what to write in the emails how to do the whole preview appointment how to do the whole listing appointment you can do this on your own if you just have the coaching and so the, to me that's that's my greatest passion and the people that i'm coaching right now are getting one listing appointment a week uh, and then I'm now I'm helping them to close those appointments on their own without me having to go to to the appointment with them. And so, you know, that way they can build their own teams. Uh, you know, they can do whatever they, they want to do in their career as long as they have the sales advice that, you know, most agents don't think of themselves for whatever reason as salespeople, yeah. you know, and that's what we do. We're selling and you have to be good at sales. You can't just be a people person. You have to yeah. know how to sell. You can't just be nice, you know. Yeah. So you need someone to teach you exactly how to sell, how to follow up, how to handle objections and how to do this. And so that's what I love teaching. I love it, man. And, and it's funny that yeah. you say that because, you know, some, you know, a, a good portion of the, the, um, you know, agents that I see that are struggling doing zero deals are the nicest agents in the yeah. and the, and it's people. because the, you know, and it's, I think it's also just a product of society where, 
you know, your friends will see, they'll, they'll tell you, Oh my God, you'd be so good real estate because you're just mm -hmm. so nice. You're such a people person, but you have no yeah. skill set to actually execute, which is, you know, what causes them to, to not take action and, and, yeah. you know, fail. So, um, I love it. And it's really nice. And that's one of the beauties of this model is that, you know, people could partner with us and, you know, when they partner with you and they get all of the kind of traditional side right. of prospecting and, and, you know, closing a, you know, a listing a week, and then they get our strategies on the content, the marketing, the branding, and it's all for free because of the yeah, nature of this model free. and so that's i mean i don't know what you know people people at other brokerages i don't know if they're getting this kind of free coaching that they might be getting you know a fancy office or a, or a fancy business card for free but what they're not getting is the coaching to actually since i like i said since i left compass i've more than tripled my sales and and you know that's without a, a an exuberantly fancy office or the business cards they make it are from moo i mean i make them myself <laughs> You know, so you don't, you don't need all of this. What you need is to build a brand. You need coaching. You need, you know, sales coaching. You need brand the branding that you provide with, you know, the marketing you provide, the, the social media marketing that you and the twins are doing. And then the just raw sales coaching that, that, that I'm doing with cold calling with, and with everything else. So when you kind of have a whole team like that, that's just working in your favor for no, no cost at all, just wanting to see you succeed. You know, yeah. uh, a rising tide raises all ships. So if we can help our team succeed, then we're, we're all winning. And that's what we want. Well, that's why, you know, you and I are such a good partnership because you've got yeah. the, you know, you've got the strategies that give you now business. I've got the strategies that give you later business that yeah. get you out of the prospecting. So it's kind of this really yeah. cool transitionary period where yeah. you can start with what both were doing and then eventually yeah. you'll be able to scale and have your your business coming to you. So, man, this is awesome and, and really grateful to have you on here and for you to be so willing and kind to, you know, really share everything that you're doing. Um, guys, I'm going to make sure I link all of Slater's profiles below. You want to make sure you follow them because because he's doing a ton of epic stuff. And again, uh, you can feel free to book a call with him and myself uh, to talk about partnering with us and getting all of our training tools and resources for free. So uh, Slater, thanks again for coming on, man. Thanks for having me. You bet, guys. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe as always, and we'll see you in the next video.